Good phones are getting cheap, and cheap phones are getting good. So, MKBHD here, and I've said that quote many times over the years, over the past, you know, thousand videos or so, but I guess now with like the highest end phones ranging anywhere from 1500 to 2000 bucks, it feels a lot more like the second half is more true than the first half. So this is a little bit of a different video, not because it's on some crazy piece of tech, it's still on a phone, but as you know, I do a lot of videos and looking at the highest end, bleeding edge, best of the best phones, and a lot of the mid range where there's a lot of competition. But the benefit is as those get better and better, well, the baseline also gets better and better. So this video, I'm gonna be taking a look at how much smartphone you can get for that baseline. So Infinix wanted to sponsor this video and put their device in this showcase. So they're coming out with a phone called the Infinix Note 8 for $200 flat in 2020. So this full blown smartphone like this for 200 even. Like I remember when 200 bucks and below was reserved for either dumb phones or flip phones or just extremely old phones that they're like trying desperately to sell but we'll probably never see another software update again. And even today, 200 bucks is wireless headphones, you know, some Bluetooth speakers basically. But now there's clearly full-fledged $200 smartphones like this in 2020. And so my question is, how good are they really? How good is this new baseline? Because obviously you're not expecting, you know, high-end flagship internals or specs or bells and whistles or anything, but like, how good is this new baseline? Because we've come a long way. So first of all, let's just start with what comes in the box. Also, by the way, yes, I do have a bunch of these extra ones over here. Stay tuned till the end. I'll detail a little giveaway I'm doing with some of these on Twitter, so make sure you're following over there. But the box here, as you can see, is pretty simple, giving you the name and some specs. And then when you get inside, the phone is up at the top and it is a big phone, but we'll get to that in a second. Then also included in this sleeve underneath here is the SIM card ejector tool, a screen protector, and then an included clear plastic case, which again, you know, in a world where most people do put a case on their phone, it is a pretty nice thing to see you get that for free at this baseline. Then underneath that is probably the best part actually, because you can't take this stuff for granted. You also get an 18 watt fast charging brick, a USB-C cable, and a pair of wired earbuds. So to get them and the fast charger in a world where some don't even have a charger is pretty good. Okay, so then the phone itself. I feel like what helps you actually appreciate what you're getting or how much you're getting here is just how much attention they put into having it resemble the higher end phones. Like, I guess at, a, at the highest level, they're all kind of trying to look like the same highest end phones. We've seen that with the notch and with adding extra cameras and stuff like that. And at that high level, it is kind of nitpicky competition stuff. But at this level, it's actually really appreciated. Like, look at this screen. A $200 phone used to have small screen, big bezels. I mean, they obviously used to not look that great. This phone has a gigantic display. It's a 6.95 inch LCD display. So there's tons of room here. Now uh, it is a 1640 by 720 resolution. So clearly not the sharpest thing in the world, but just as far as typical use, you know, scrolling through social media, looking at photos, watching videos, especially, that's what it's good at. This is fine. And there's also a stereo speaker pair, one with the top earpiece and one at the bottom. So you're not gonna easily block the whole thing with just one finger and it gets decently loud. So the media experience on this phone already is actually, I'd say pretty impressive for 200 bucks. I'm not gonna nitpick about viewing angles and refresh rate obviously for this price, but it's worth noting, Infinix actually makes another phone here called the Zero Eight, which for 250 bucks has a 1080p 90 hertz display. So. There you go. But let's get over here to the back of the phone. The back of the Note 8 here is this like interesting pattern of glossy blue pyramid shapes. It's pretty neat, I guess, plastic material, of course, but hey, you can drop that case on it that you got for free with the phone if you want to. And then at the bottom here, you may notice it is USB type C, which again, you actually shouldn't take for granted. There's like a whole world of gadgets that are still catching up on that front. And also a headphone jack, which, actually still feels more necessary in this world of budget phones where not everybody's also trying to shell out a hundred more dollars on wireless headphones. You wanna know my favorite thing though that they mimicked from high-end phones is 
the gigantic battery. A lot of phones coming out now have huge batteries. This one has a 5,200 milliamp hour battery. That's pretty sweet. And they've branded it, they call it Power Marathon Tech. I just call it a huge battery, honestly. And we know when you combine a huge battery with a 720p display and a chip that doesn't take a ton of power, there's a Helio G80 processor in this phone. You're looking at a two day phone for a lot of people who get this phone and they're still fast charging if you need it. Then the software experience takes inspiration from a couple different places, I can tell, though it is obviously still skinned, there's no getting around that, uh, with what they're calling XOS on top of Android 10. And there are some ads in the OS as we've seen in some other affordable phones and there are some preloaded apps as well. But hey, that's the beauty of Android is if you wanna drop another launcher on here or uninstall basically any of these apps, you can easily do so. And performance is good enough through animations and scrolling as you can see. This is what 60 Hertz is gonna feel like and you're also getting 128 gigs of storage and six gigs of RAM. So enough to run some games on that huge, nearly seven inch display and feel totally fine with it. And there's a couple interesting features built into the software too. Like I found there's this multitasking pop-up that comes up when you swipe in from the side and hold, and that'll give you some shortcuts to quickly get into your top five favorite apps you can customize or start a screen recording or take a screenshot quickly. Uh, so that's actually something pretty unique. I don't think I've seen on any other phones at all. Now for cameras, this this might be the area where it, it's it's most trying to look like the most expensive phones. And it, I think it does. That's why you've got this, this bar back here. Total, six cameras on this phone, four on the back, two on the front. So the four back cameras are the 64 megapixel main camera, then macro camera, a depth sensor, and what they call the AI lens. So yeah, mostly what you're gonna be working with here are the main camera and maybe occasionally the macro. And the photos you get out of this $200 phone, I'd say are passable. Now, of course, as soon as you get into difficult lighting, you know, where you wouldn't even think of bringing some phones from the past, this is where this one will start to suffer, mainly in dynamic range and noise. But again, I don't think anybody buying this phone will mind that one bit. And the fact that this camera is so nice and snappy, and actually pretty responsive in the first place, is a nice bonus. And then the selfie camera up here at the front in your dual Infinity O cutout is joined by a depth sensor as well for improved portrait mode. Again, just makes it look more like the high-end phones of this past year, but you know, the photos are passable for 200 bucks and even a little portrait mode action will work if you're into that. So overall, I'm actually, I would say impressed. I think I've gotten in such a good rhythm of looking at all these different high-end bleeding edge phones. And we also know what to expect in that sort of hardware, but on another level, I think it's harder to make a good phone at this price. Like a lot of good decisions have to go into making a good phone for 200 bucks and it's happening. It's happening in 2020. This phone costs less than a pair of AirPods Pro. That's pretty crazy. So thanks again to Infinix for sponsoring this video. They sent over a bunch here. I got about five Note 8s to give away on Twitter. So make sure you follow on Twitter. I'll link it below the like button and uh, stay tuned for the tweet where I'll give some of these away. But I wanna know what you guys think is the most impressive piece of a good phone for 200 bucks in 2020. What was the piece that impressed you the most? Let me know in the comments below. Either way, thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.